It's an anniversary day in an anniversary year in what is an anniversary decade for railroads. Welcome back to the closed, temporarily, Lake Superior Railroad Museum in the St. Louis County Depot here in downtown Duluth for another one of our behind the scenes video tours and railroad stories. And today's story has to do with railroad anniversaries. It all began last year with the 150th anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railway. And of course, the survival of the Union Pacific Railway, which is why the big boy was here last summer to celebrate. This year we're celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Northern Pacific Railway, which started just outside of Duluth in Carleton. And on this date, May 23rd, 1879, we start with a railroad company that was formed on this date 141 years ago. And 141 years ago began to change history. It all begins in 1857 with the first division of the St. Paul and Pacific Railway. 1857 was the year it was chartered. And the first thing it did before it built any tracks, it went bankrupt. It might have been a little ahead of its time. It was the first railroad in Minnesota, you know. But by 1862, they had built 10 miles of track from St. Anthony to St. Paul. And then they went bankrupt again. In 1878, new management came on board and they made $500,000 that year. And that was incredible. So much so that those new managers became the new owners. And on this date, May 23rd, 1879, for $5.5 million, the St. Paul and Pacific Railway became the Minneapolis, St. Paul and Manitoba. And so they went to the syndicate to help them build the first transcontinental from coast to coast in our northern neighbor. Norm Kitson took to the job right away because he was a Canadian. And James J. Hill was a former Canadian, though now a U.S. citizen. They started building the railroad. Somewhere along the way, they figured out what James J. Hill knew. To build a railroad, you needed customers. And there's a lot of Canada without a lot of customers. Somewhere a plan was hatched to dip the railroad down into the United States, but that would have competed with the Great Northern. And that plan, secretively, was hatched without Hill's knowledge. And boy, was he pissed. It ruined his friendship with Norm, and Normie was knighted after he finished the railway and was quite a star in Canada, but he had lost his long-term friendship with James J. Hill. And he vowed to spend the rest of his life to put it back in, together. And here's what happened. They started writing letters to each other, long letters. James J. Hill ranting about how he was being betrayed. Norm Kitson saying it had nothing to do with me, I wasn't even aware of it, and besides, we never did it. They finally reconcile. Norm moves back from Florida to St. Paul, buys some land just down the block from the Hill Mansion up on Summit Avenue, and builds an incredible estate. Around that, he puts a high brick wall, and then he notices something. He hasn't been to St. Paul for a while. The land he bought was right in the middle of a migration that happened every morning and every night. The workers down on the waterfront did not live on Summit Avenue, they lived elsewhere. And they walked through what was a vacant lot to get to work in the morning and back at night. When Norm figured this out, it was too late. The mansion had been built, the wall had been put up, and the first thing he did was knock a hole in the back so that they could walk through the back of the wall and down to their jobs. In the winter when he was in Florida, he instructed his house servants to open the front and back doors of the mansion so that the people could walk through the house and get warmed up on their way to and from their jobs on the waterfront, which made Norm Kitson Minnesota's most hospitable man. Like James J. Hill and his wife Mary, Norm and his wife were very Catholic. And upon their demise, they left their estate to the Catholic Church. And now when you go to St. Paul and you see that beautiful cathedral, Think of it as once Norm Kitson's estate, Minnesota's most hospitable man. Be kind to everyone by washing your hands, keeping your social distance, cover your coughs. Don't touch your face. Please, if you're sick, stay home. And also, please, please, let's take care of each other.